In a previous video, I shared a few landscape design and gardening mistakes that people tend to make that lead to more maintenance later on. In this video, I want to expand on this list a little bit, but I also want to include some general mistakes that people make that decrease the overall quality of the landscape design. So if you're starting a landscaping or a gardening project, I hope this helps you. The first common mistake which affects the quality of the landscape design or the garden overall is to not consider winter interest carefully enough. It's very easy to end up with a landscape that is dense and diverse and beautiful in the summer or spring or fall, but then in the winter goes completely flat, bare, and dormant. And this is because many popular gardening or landscaping plants are either deciduous, which means they drop their leaves in the winter, or they are herbaceous perennials. They go completely dormant, they die back down to the roots, then they come back from the roots again in the spring. This means uh, if you focus on these plants too much, you end up with a very open, very bare landscape in the winter. One design strategy to avoid an empty winter garden is to start your design with exclusively evergreen plants or plants that are otherwise interesting in the winter and create a spacious design that looks balanced and beautiful in the winter first. Then you move on to the deciduous plants, the herbaceous perennials, add them as you desire until you, you reach the desired density or you otherwise run out of room for, for more plants in the space. The next mistake to avoid is not designing with use in mind first. This is very common. You start out with a blank canvas and you want to create something beautiful, but the best way to start is by considering how the space will be used by you, by other people, by wildlife, whatever your goals are, the future activities are for the space. That should be the first thing on your mind when you approach a landscape design project. This is especially overlooked and important in front yards where folks tend to reach out to me just wanting something beautiful, something low maintenance. But there are a lot of uses, even for a front yard you barely spend any time in. You could consider how you or guests walk through the space, where deliveries are left, how utilities are maintained, maybe how you get your garbage or recycling bins to the curb. You could consider privacy, security. And unused spaces like front yards are incredible opportunities as well. Consider how you could change your design plans so you could spend more time in your front yard. Maybe you need more shade, maybe you need a little bit more privacy, or perhaps if you added a short decorative fence around part or all of your front yard, you'd feel safer sitting on the porch as your grandkids played, for example. Sometimes just a few medium-sized plants to block the view of a seating area can be all you need to feel comfortable spending more time in that space. You could also start with an activity, a goal, a value, and design your landscape around that. P perhaps you like cooking. How could you include some culinary herbs, for example, in your front yard, or grow food in your front yard, or support wildlife in your front yard? Every landscape design is a unique opportunity, and you can achieve many goals, even in a front yard where you have picky neighbors or perhaps rigid rules in your neighborhood about what can be out front. Now's a really good time to mention, if you would like help with all of this and more, check out Design Your Own Landscape Layout, my brand new online course for the do-it-yourselfer who wants to create their own landscape design plan. This course guides you through the design process, from brainstorming your ideas, prioritizing them, playing to the strengths of your site, researching plants, drawing out the design plan, guides you through the entire design process. I'm so excited to announce that this course is now open for enrollment. It's been in the works for months. So if you wanna learn more, sign up, check out that link in the description below. The next really common mistake is forgetting to plan enough space for the inevitable maintenance activities. You could consider the space just for performing the activity, just access in general. You can also consider material and tool storage. It can be helpful to start with an inventory of the maintenance activities that you are performing already or will inevitably need to do. And then think of ways that you can make these activities easier by providing yourself with a little more room. An example, if you have a hedge that you need to prune, trim pretty routinely, when those clippings fall, it can be a lot easier if you have a pathway designed right along that hedge. And then you can just sweep up the trimmings as opposed to having them fall into a garden bed where you're trying to pick them up, clean them up around other plants. You're trying not to hurt the plants. That's just one example, making sure you have enough room for the maintenance. Then you can consider convenient tool storage. Whenever possible, if, if you can safely store the tools that you need for the maintenance activity right where you will be performing that routine activity, that helps a lot. An example is a pitchfork right by your compost pile. Find a place to hang it up where it'll be out of the elements just a little bit. Create a little box for it on the fence. Just one example. Additionally, material storage. I highly recommend, when possible, setting aside a corner of your landscape to store any extra materials temporarily. So if you get mulch delivered, gravel, for example, you have some bags of potting soil, you have a place where you can sit these things where they won't be in the way. It decreases the stress of you know having a pile of mulch delivered and then it's in your driveway, it's in the way, you have to spread it right away. If you have a place where it can go, you can move it. So it sits out of the way. It, it makes those maintenance activities easier. 
And it can be nice to have some of these materials just on hand. The next really common mistake is not selecting plants that are adapted to your climate and to your soil so they are less maintenance. And this sounds a little bit obvious, but it's so common. Folks have an idea of what they want to grow in their head. They select these plants and then they work to change their soil. They set up these irrigation systems so they can grow these plants. It's kind of a perspective I think that that rolls over in, from vegetable gardening. When you have a vegetable garden, there are these common vegetables that require a certain pH, a certain amount of organic matter. But landscaping is a little bit different. If you do a little bit of research, you can select plants that will do well in your soil, that will do well in your climate without irrigation. Uh, granted, most plants need some level of irrigation until they get established because plants aren't used to being transplanted. They're not used to moving from one place to another. Once they're established, they might need very little or no irrigation. It's all about doing a little extra research and selecting the plants that will do well with what you have instead of trying to change what you have. You'll need to start by learning about your space, learn about your climate, learn about your soil, and then look for resources that focus specifically on climate adapted plants. There are nurseries that specialize in this books. And an odd tip, look for plants that no one is taking care of. Plants that you like the look of, that you think are beautiful. Things that are growing, you know, in the abandoned corner of a parking lot that are in full bloom. I guarantee that you, if you start looking for plants that are not being cared for, you will find some beautiful things. And you can use these bits and pieces as inspiration and, and use those as the backbone of your landscape design. There are more options out there than you're imagining, I'm, I'm sure. If you would like more help with this, I've created the free mini course, How to Choose the Perfect Plant, to help you do this plant research and make sure you're selecting a plant that will do well in your space. The next mistake is not planning yard debris or yard waste management into your design plan. And it sounds so boring. It's actually one of my favorite landscape design topics because there are so many interesting methods. And even though you're not thinking about it now when you're picking materials and colors and plants, how big will your patio be? Last thing on your mind is yard debris. But when you're maintaining your landscape, it's going to be a constant consideration. If you're taking debris off site, you should think about how they will be taken off, off site. If you're going to store them until you can drive them somewhere. If you're going to use one of the curbside pickup services or, a, you know, a green bin, where will that bin be stored? How will you wheel it to the curb if it's heavy? These are all things you should consider early in the design process. Make sure you have space for this. And there are a ton of options for processing materials on site. Composting is way easier, way, way more fun than most people consider. It takes a corner of your landscape. You can set it aside. You can do just yard debris. You can also include food scraps. There are compost in place methods or smothering methods that you can plan into your installation phases. You can use yard debris to smother out patches of weeds or lawns. For example, you could start a compost in place method in the fall and then by spring you can plant into that and then as you're planting into that bed, you can then start creating a new bed in a new area, put all of your yard debris in this new spot. These methods are a little bit nuanced, so I have a couple of the most boring videos on these subjects. A link to the playlist in the top right corner of this video right now, as well as in the description below. If you want to learn more, you want to check those out. It's worth learning these methods. A little bit of planning what you are going to do with what yard debris can save you so much time in the future. Speaking of installation phase planning, it's way too easy to forget to break your landscaping project down into these bite-sized steps. You can design your landscape so you can take breaks. You can have a landscape that looks relatively complete in the interim before you take on the next project. When it comes to planting, you could start with these islands. Start with the privacy plants, focal point plants, food producing plants, the largest plants, work largest uh, from largest to smallest, whatever these plants are that you want to prioritize. You could start with these little islands and then expand the beds as you want to add more plants and uh, as the plants grow and then you can connect the beds. That's a great method for, for the gardening area. And then regarding uh, other aspects of your landscape, start with where you want to spend the most time, for example. Perhaps install the patio that's closest to your house first. Or you could start with the compost area first. R regardless of what you choose, the only thing that matters is that you have a plan, you have things broken down into steps. I recommend planning invasive or aggressive weed species removal into this phase plan as well, because these this should be done in advance of planting. Similarly, soil prep. And I mentioned that you can do these compost in place methods, but they do take a little bit of time. So you could be working on one in the fall while you're planting another area or removing weeds over here. The only thing that matters is that you have the phases more or less planned out. So you have these breaks in between. 
and you have these garden beds prepared well in advance of planting. And again, for help with all of this and more, check out Design Your Own Landscape Layout, my new online course for the do-it-yourselfer who wants to create their own landscape design plan. I'll guide you through the design process in this course. To learn more and to sign up, check out that link in the description below. And if you're new here, hello, my name is Eve. I'm a landscape designer and a horticulturist, and this is Garden Project Academy, where I offer online courses and resources to help you with your next garden project. Let me know if you have any additional questions, post them in the comments below, and thank you so much for watching. I, I hope this helps you with your project.